Apparently this door cannot be opened. Uh, so, not entirely sure what to do here. There's no more enemies, so. So, I'm absolutely convinced that this run is cursed. I am, I am locked in. This is the fourth try at filming this after my footage got corrupted twice. So uh, now, of course, I encounter a, a game-breaking bug. Uh, absolutely brilliant. I will try and kill uh, anything that is in the corridor. But nope. Well, I guess that's it. Uh, I'm going to take the honourable way out, and I'm going to endeavour to, once again, complete this run. Hello and welcome back to our Delving the Proving Ground series. In this episode, I'm taking through what I think is the strongest deck in the game for the Proving Grounds, which is the Ashura Weapons deck. This deck revolves around using the ability of Ashura, Lotus Dance. For those of you who aren't aware, Lotus Dance has two major effects when it comes to weapons. Firstly, it makes them cost zero magic stones, even if Zed charged. And secondly, it gives them unlimited uses. The downside to Ashura is that any weapons in your hand will get discarded if Ashura dies or runs out of lifespan. The solution to this is you discard Ashura before he dies and therefore protect your weapons. As such, we are running three pairs of weapons in the deck. Uh, two pairs of the Sphinx card. You want to have two weapons to spam between with Ashura because it actually saves some animation frames so you do more damage. So two copies of Sphinx Pairs, uh, one copy of Demon Lord and one copy of the Astrobot. The reason that we are running these weapons is my testing, which I'll show you shortly, shows that these have the highest DPS of the weapons in the game. Uh, a notable weapon I have not included is Sekhmet, which even though it is in theory very strong, does not actually do as much damage as these. The Sphinx is a defense ignoring long range attack which also has lifesteal and paralysis. The Demon Lord and Astrobot are close range weapons that allow us to get a lot of extra range and in the Astrobot's case give us a all around defense, uh, making them very useful. We're running two copies of the Banshee, not to abuse with Ashura, even though she is good, but primarily to do things like break down doors and to help capture the Emperor at the end. Finally, we are running some support cards for this package. We have got the Decoy Pillar, which is going to allow us to survive rooms, distract people whilst we set up the combo. We have got the Dewata, the usual Let's try and escape a bad situation card. Just hide underground and hope everything goes away. Shouldn't have to use that in theory. This build absolutely decimates everything. We have got the Sea Monk and Mind Flayer combo, which allow us to reset the deck if something goes horribly wrong. And finally, two copies of the Valkyrie. Not only because her Meteor Shower is one of the best panic buttons in the game, but in theory, the ability Valhalla that she has will do a lot of damage if we run out of deck. However, you will probably see her most likely used for the Meteor Shower, although she will feature in an upcoming episode. So, with that, I'm going to show you the results of my testing, and then we'll get into the run. Is it worth Zed charging Ashura? So, as you can see from my testing in the Sacred Battle Arena, a Zed-charged Ashura does live significantly longer than a non-Zed-charged Ashura. This means that throughout the Proving Grounds run, I will be using Ashura Zed-charged if I can afford the Magic Stone expenditure. It's just more efficient. How much DPS do different weapon pairs do? So the first weapon pair I decided to test was the Double Sphinx combo. You can see it does 70 damage a hit, allowing me to kill the boss very quickly. 55 DPS is the highest I've found. The second weapon pair I decided to test was Sekhmet. 
But you can see that even though it hits a lot of times, it actually does a lot less damage, only 37 DPS, and it means that I end up taking a much longer time to kill the boss. Whether that's an effect of the boss having high defence, I don't know, but it isn't the best. The third one I tried was the Astrobot and the Demon Lord. The Astrobot does 78 and the Demon Lord does 57 twice because of the dive, making this tied for 55 DPS, so I'll use this in the run. In this one I decide to test the Banshee's DPS, it's 40 DPS if they're both Zed charged, however I was just making sure that the Ashura does in fact allow you to Zed charge and have different weapon damages, so I'll always be Zed charging during the run. This next one, I try the Sekhmet and the Sphinx. Now, this does ultimately improve the damage of the Sekhmet, but it is just a watered down version of the double Sphinx combo, so I will not be using this during the run. Now, Valkyrie's Valhalla attack is a very weird one, and trying to work out how it scales is quite confusing. So, here with zero dead units, it does 10 damage except to the two spear bots. Weird. Then I've got three dead units here. Uh, all of the dead units are Yowies, by the way, and it does 40. So it seems logical that each dead unit adds 10 damage. And here with six dead units, I do 70 damage. Now, there's something weird that actually happens in this clip, and I'm slowing it down shortly. When the spear bots end up standing on the fire, they seem to take damage twice, which might imply that there's a second damage hitbox for the fire. Notice a hit of 36 followed by a hit of 20, killing both of the bots. We enter the proving grounds on floor 1, which is a fire themed floor overall. Not a huge amount goes on in the early game, so I've just sped it up by 50% so that we can get through it a little bit faster. I'm putting on some Lost Kingdoms 2 music in the background, so you've got Raldo Forest for your chill chill beats to card game and get turned into runestones too. But not a huge amount on the first floor. There's not even a compulsory fight, so just straight to the exit here. On floor two is the lizard man themed floor. So I'm just going to be going around mopping up most of the enemies. I do want to prove how powerful this deck is by not really leaving any of the proving grounds uncleared. So I will clear most of the rooms on this run. Uh, very easy kill on a basilisk here. Just um, early game enemies, nothing really to write home about. Uh, there is of course the Trent which can have quite a uh, high health pool but the Demon Prince will finish it off. Now one of the things I'm going to be trying to do throughout this run is not letting my Azuras die. Uh, it's a lot easier to discard an Azura than it is to discard all of the weapons so I'll often end up running through my deck exactly once and using one Ashura per room of each floor uh, because there are three compulsory rooms that you have to do and I can clear each of them in about 30 seconds. I get lost here. I probably should know floor two's layout by now but unfortunately I just cannot remember these things and you know what this is a chill stream we, we just go along, we just kill some stuff with some dudes. I'm not trying to go the fastest, I'm just trying to clear it with different decks. Uh, part of the reason I love this game is that there's just so many different viable options that you can go through, and finding them is just the fun bit. So getting some nice range attacks in here with the Banshee and the Demon. Uh, the Demon normally is only a one-use weapon, so it can only realistically be used in this deck. And in terms of other card games, the things that I like are trying to make bad cards good in context. And I would say very heavily that this Demon King is that type of card. 
So not particularly special rewards here. Just a lizard man, just a Trent. But we're coming up to something weird that's about to happen. So you may just spot it in the distance, but there's a matador with decoy action. And after I play the Azura here, I get really confused that my Banshee seems to be firing off to the right. And then my Sphinx, and I go, is this another glitch? Is this like the thing that killed my previous run? No, turns out the weapons are affected by decoy action, so they'll actually change the angle of fire from what you're intending, uh, which is not something I've really encountered in quite a long time of playing this game. So uh, it took me by surprise there. Quite an interesting interaction. I'm not even going to bother trying to attack the Hobgoblin here. I mean, he's a default guy. Apparently I just cap him because I find that there's a dead end here and, you know, might as well clear him out while I get the chance. But, um, yeah, quite surprised about that decoy action. Genuinely, I've been playing this game for about 10 years off and on and it's just never come up. So once again, this is the Matador, just going to easily kill him with one hit of the Sphinx. The Sphinx absolutely devastating in these early floors, uh, very, very few things require more than one hit, and quite often the things that do require more than one hit will then be status, so quite easy to get through. Compulsory fight coming up, we have got a Fire Golem, and there should be another one uh, looking at me from around the corner, but uh, first one goes down in two Sphinx shots, and this one is going to go down very quickly to another two Sphinx shots. Uh, using the invincibility exploit here that you can't be knocked down while throwing a card allows you to dodge attacks, and I am going to be trying to do that actively during this video. So, with the compulsory fight out of the way, all I need to do in this room is sprint to the exit, but if anything pops up, like a fire golem, I'm going to try and kill it. Now this is the Meteor Shower of the Valkyrie, and I absolutely love this card. Um, she's actually accurate in her aim throughout this run. Uh, like I've said before, the Me Meteor Shower is actually more of a panic button. It's not reliable, but the bigger the enemy, the better that attack is going to be. So, the new floor. This is the one that's Temple of Sharashia themed, and I've actually put the Temple of Sharashia music on. Uh, this is the rematch between the Valkyrie and the Ashura. Guess who wins? Spoiler alert, it's Zero Mana Sphinx. Uh, and by a lot. So, Valkyrie falls in two hits, Demon Fox, the optional boss of the Plains of Rowell, dies in three. Uh, nice, easy floor overall. Uh, none of them managed to spot me early on, so I get to clear them out quite easily. Uh, once again, I run into a dead end. Uh, I know there are maps for the proofing grounds, I just refuse to use them. So I'm using quite a fun mix here of the Demon Prince and... It's Demon Lord, I don't know why I keep calling me a Demon Prince. But uh, the Demon Lord and the Sphinx, which has quite a lot of range and a lot of damage to go alongside it. I get a bit over eager on this floor, pre-preparing the Azura where I don't actually need to, where there's no actual fights. So... The good thing is that if you run, you do get about half an Ashura per room, and for these low floors, it is going to be enough. About 15 seconds will be able to kill most enemies in the game. So, with the end in sight, I... We'll just be making a break for it. Nothing particularly else spawns here. Quite an uneventful floor, uh, hence why I only get a one star rating. But I do get another copy of the Ashura, uh, which would be good if I didn't already have like four. So we're now on the first Earth themed floor, um, featuring Mole Monster and also featuring the Trickster. 
So I do try and take the trickster out here alongside the mole monster using the meteor shower. Um, I try and position them so that a good area can get covered. Of course, one hit is going to be enough to kill the trickster. Don't manage to get the mole monster, but he does live underground, so he has the same sort of immortality as the Dewata card that I always use in the case of um, problems. A couple of Banshee shots will kill the Cyclops. Not the evil eye, the colour is slightly different, I think. But I get myself ready for this next room, where I'm going to use the robot and demon combi. So I pre-prepare the Ashura, I run in, and once again there's nothing. Early game proving grounds really don't have a lot going on. But I do spot ahead of me a compulsory combat, so I am going to have just about enough of it here. I know I'm going to have to redo the Ashura, so I pre-prepare that as much as I can. Uh, kill a Draconid in one go. Uh, there is a mole monster in the floor, which is going to prove difficult to reach, but the Astro Bot is going to be able to hit it. And then, of course, the Nightmare isn't actually a real card, so it doesn't matter what you do to it. Now, in the distance there is the Tumble Chick, and it's incredibly cruel of the game's creators to make you kill a Tumble Chick and force you to. But I quickly notice, hey, it actually hasn't opened. I have not encountered this before. Uh, the, the enemies seem to have just respawned and I have to clear this room again. Not a particular problem because it's early game, uh, it doesn't make a huge difference, but very weird things are happening. I decide not to risk it, just in case. Uh, I am going to have to be able to kill the more monster underground, so Sphinx has come out, and yeah, we're going to just destroy everything. Have a quick look round to see if the mole monster's there, but while my back's turned, the corridor opens up and we're able to move on. So I've now queued the Plains of Roll theme, another one of my favourite tracks from this game, uh, just for the chill bits of the game where I'm not panicking and being attacked by uh, eight neutral monsters at once. So the next floor's a, another fairly easy introduction into the floor. Uh, this starting room only has a Juggernaut, a Stone Golem and a Venus Spider, which aren't particularly tough enemies for any stage of the game. The Juggernaut here seems to be trying to attack my Ashura, so I hit it with a max range UH F Shockwave, that's the name of the Sphinx's attack. Well done me. I'm ready to join FaZe Clan because of that. And other than that, it's just going to be a straightforward move on to the next room. I'm keeping the Demon Lord here because, frankly, I think he's such a cool weapon. Um, but nothing to fight in this room, so I think I think I end up getting quite disappointed here, if I recall correctly, that I don't actually get to unleash him on anyone. Yep, I'll just make a straight dash to the exit here. Nothing really spawns to stop me, so I'll just collect my rewards. And I end up getting a... Juggernaut and a Bumhagen. Very nice. So the next floor introduces us immediately to a couple of banshees. I happen to open up with the Dewata in my hand, which is going to allow me to kill the Grey Mold and kill a banshee straight away. And uh, my phase application is immediately revoked, where I miss several shots on an entirely unaware enemy who's just ambling about at random. Uh, any hit will kill this Banshee, and I miss three in a row, and then four in a row, 
And then I decide to just whack it with a pot. Which actually solves a lot of life's problems now that I think about it. But one of the exits is blocked off, so I finally don't get confused and go down the wrong way. And I just use some banches to disarm the Earth Murray trap that is lying in front of that door. I'm quite happy with my hand here, so I end up using a Ashura uh, Demon Demon Lord and Sphinx combo to clear out this room. The enemy in this room is a single Voivra. Now, this is a weapon card that I do love the appearance of, but is actually, unfortunately, relatively weak. It's, it only does about 10 damage, and its special effect is that if it kills an enemy, the amount of damage it may, ends up doing is given to you as magic stones, which is useful for money farming and not a lot else. Now, in this room, you can easily get surrounded by Voivra, uh, it is a big risk if you're not aware and you run straight in, but as soon as you see one Voivra, you know this is the Voivra floor. The others don't seem to notice me, and so they're quite easy to just sequentially take down with whatever cards are available. Here, Meteor Shower manages to hit twice. Again, good card, Valkyrie, does a lot of damage, bit unreliable at times, but it is an excellent panic button for hitting all around you. And notice it would have taken an entire Sphinx, well two entire Sphinxes to kill that Voivra, so her damage is absolutely off the charts. So we just continue to approach the exit. Again, these early floors before floor 10, there's not a lot will challenge even a really unoptimised playthrough. So. I even just managed to drive by a skeleton and a banshee on the way out. Uh, apparently I just want to overkill the banshee. You only has 15 health with a 100 damage attack. So I get another couple of cards here. Uh, I get a banshee, I get a voivra. Good cards overall. Now this floor is one that always catches me out in my playthroughs. Uh, because there is, of course, the Great Elephant, which or Elephant King, which is quite easy. And then there's the Behemoth, who will snipe you from a million miles away with his laser beam. He will die pretty quickly. He only takes two Sphinx hits to kill. Uh, and the Elephant, who actually is his own Earth power-up, takes double damage from a Sphinx. Because apparently he's a very generous guy. Oh, there's a wizard hidden in the corner. But it is always quite funny when you suddenly do a lot of extra damage because your enemies are buffing you. Always good fun. So again, just head along using the standard combo of Double Sphinx. I believe that uh, at some point on this floor there should be another fight. Just as the Grenfell music kicks in, just to almost conjure up big empty rooms with no fighting. Do you remember that episode? Friends said that was the worst episode. Sorry, YouTube. But I really like the lore of this game. There's just something nice about their adaptation of the vague Hindu mythology that they're using that has a god of creation, a god of destruction, and a god of maintaining the balance between the two. And the only place you find out about it, really, is in the library. So, hey, reading is cool. And so I maintain that wasn't a bad episode. Anyway, uh, quite easy enemies here. It's just an acid cloud. I do stand in the acid because apparently I haven't been flamed enough during Final Fantasy XIV raids uh, for standing in the fire. I promise I have cleared some of the tougher ones. Uh, I don't usually stand in the fire, but apparently these acid clouds just, they just trigger something in me. I just have to stand in the fire. Uh, we keep going and of course we get a goblin lord in the distance, another acid cloud. Um, He's actually relatively useful for money farming. All he does is he produces magic stones, but he can whack you in this game. I kill a carbuncle here, and once again, 
I've got to stand in the goop. I love standing in the goop. So I take some extra damage here that you probably could avoid if you didn't like standing in goop. But hey, apparently that's just how I roll in this game. Floor based AoE, that's my thing. So just cycling through, trying to find another Ashura ready for uh, this final room where there's not a huge amount happening, so I guess I just decide to stick with a couple of Valkyries. If something goes wrong, I'll just be able to Valkyrie things to death. Always fun to do that. I find the exit and I just leg it. And I earn an Anarchy Owl, which I didn't have, and a Circusaurus, both of which are Javi rewards. So we're now on the uh, Elf floor. I consciously and intentionally use the Sphinx to dodge the Panther Mage's attack. I'm going to go back and kill that Elf for attacking me. And a very nice uh, double hit with the Banshee is going to clear both of them. The Gromtal Desert music kicks in. Always love, uh, always love Gromtal Desert. So I'm ready here with the Double Sphinx combo, just in case anything spawns. And this is a really fun room because there's two Elf Lords, which do admittedly hit me a whole bunch, but they don't do a lot of damage because. Uh, by now, I'm actually fire aligned, because I've used the Ashura so much that I now count as a fire type. Which is also going to be why I take a lot of damage from water cards when I get hit by them. This is the Sleeping Giant, and he cannot be damaged while he's asleep. So you have to wake him up, you have to let him fully wake up before you kill him. And in a couple of the recordings of this, I've actually managed to... Hit him with a sphinx and paralyze him so that he is aggroed and stunned but not awake so he can't take any further damage. So he's actually the hardest to kill enemy in this entire run because sometimes you just lock him in place and he can just troll you and you just have to wait for him to, to wake up. So again, some more elves. I think these are just generic elves. No, that's an elf lord. And we just kill them with the Sphinx. Class advantage, doesn't matter. Sphinx has got infinite range, basically. Ignores defense, does a lot of damage. And it's free! Just just cast it as much as you like. Spending 20 mana recast? Nah. That's fine. Just cheap mana. Never a problem in any card game. Here, another Elf Lord. Uh, spawns and a sleeping giant. I decide to go and get my revenge on the sleeping giant. I run directly into the path of the arrow or the knife, but a easy hit with the sphinx. Elves dodge backwards, not to the side, means that I'll hit it. Now this one is a paralyzed and undamageable sleeping giant. So now that he's woken up, I can kill him. But I wasn't going to be able to there. I clear out a couple of enemies that have uh, spawned close to the exit pipe and now we are going into the live section. So everything from this point is a live reaction. Have fun. Hello and welcome to Floor 11. Everything from this point onwards is live. That's right, we are using special technology so that the first bit is actually scripted and planned and the rest of it is a live reaction to the mysteries of the Proving Ground. So, you join me here on the wood-themed floor. You can see a Rafflesia in the background, you can see an Archer Tree, and of course you can see a Plague Rat. But we're going to ignore them uh, because they are just too easy for someone of my incredible level of skills with this deck. Uh, I can say that because uh, I actually haven't made any astronomically bad misplays so far, so uh, please don't judge me for when they inevitably happen. Um, so, just some nice easy uh, challenge rooms here. 
Killing a ghost armor, killing a Camellios. Uh, Camellios with the hidden ability here to change element when it's hit, so it becomes earth themed. Uh, you, I guess, are supposed to treat them as challenges and, you know, hit them with a attack of one element and then change it into the other element, but uh, they're actually too weak to bother with that, so I, I just like killing them. So we continue on with the run. Uh, no major challenges so far, but of course we have got the difficult rooms coming up at some point. So I killed three comedians and something, and now I get a plague rat and an archer tree. Well done, me. So the whipworm level starts off with a Fenrir, and you always have to be careful with uh, the Fenrir. As you notice, he actually managed to survive a hit from a demon lord, who should have type advantage against him, and lived to tell the tale, and hit me back. So always be careful on this floor, especially with a slower deck like this. As it happens, my draw RNG was pretty good, so I was able to deal with it, and now of course I can set up as normal. So, using the corridors here, just uh, getting ahead on uh, setting up for the next room. I am trying to fight most things in this run because really it just demonstrates how powerful the deck is. Notice, when I get the drop on Fenrir, and Fenrir doesn't get the drop on me, he is a very easy foe. Just killing all these King Mandragoras as well. Just because they're there makes this quite a safe room. So once again, pre-prepare your Ashura. Leave it as late as possible, just in case you can get some value out of it. Uh, a Valkyrie should be just good enough for this room. Uh, this one once again has a Fenrir, but our Meteor Shower should help us this time. And then of course I always have the Decoy Pillar to help set up. Double hit on Fenrir? Not quite. Uh, very sad. Notice Fenrir can actually time so that he will hit you just as you leave an animation. He is actually evil as, a, uh, as an enemy for this, uh, for this deck. Fortunately, not so tough when he's slowed. Oh man, I thought he was close. He survived on one health, which is uh, very unfortunate. So once again, just going to go through, make sure that I have some, some stuff to actually fight with, because you can actually get a lot of enemies here. And a third Fenrir! Fortunately, he can't actually damage the Ashura because of the type disadvantage that he has. So, not hugely threatening again after you're set up. And if you want to just endlessly kill this guy, he just respawns. Just respawns endlessly. So I'm probably just going to leg it to the exit here. Detonate that for safety. Nope. Apparently, it survived. So, slowly then. You know what I said about misplays? Well, a copy of King Mandragore is not bad. Right, the water floor. The only real thing to think about on this floor is the rubber flog froggy, who is overpowered. And of course this panther mage. Some people might say that's the threat of this room, but... Real gangsters know that this is the rubber froggy room. Uh, of course, this is the floor in my previous run, which actually uh, caused a soft lock. So I am going to try and avoid that soft lock. I'm even going to do things like check the map in a corridor so that I don't enter the room that can lock itself. In fact, I'm going to check that now. Right. Well, this isn't helpful. They're both the same. Hmm. I think it ought to be the left one. So, time to start busting down doors. Now, 
Now, here I probably shouldn't be trying to prioritise getting out the Demon Lord, but I think he's cool. Quick peek round. That's a door! That's a door! I'm not soft locked. I, I'm so happy. I might actually finally finish this episode. So, just here using the lovely combo of the Astro Bot and Demon Lord to be able to do a lot of damage and have a good level of defense at the same time. Octobot does require, sorry not Octobot, Octobush does need quite a high DPS to take down, so uh, well worth having one of the more powerful weapons options here. So just keeping generically good cards here and running across the exit. Uh, another Octobot turns up, but a Meteor Shower, in theory, as long as they all hit, should be able to deal with an Octobot. And he is relatively sizeable as, a, as an enemy. Uh, wow, took three hits. And then, of course, just try and avoid the Pazuzu Whirlwinds. He is a lot more powerful as an enemy, unfortunately, than as a friend. March Hare and Fuka. Careful how you say that. Right, so if you're still with me, YouTube has not taken me down for saying the word Fuka, which is a type of enemy in this game, and nothing else. Please do not laugh. So, another compulsory challenge room here. So, preload the Ashura, make sure that the Lotus Dance shows up. And then we have to fight a dragon. So, again, dragons here tend to be pretty weak when you can just sphinx them to death. But not one to walk into unprepared. Especially if you get the frost dragon um, effect on you, then that can be really painful. So, because sphinxes are good against so many cards, I'm once again going to... Uh, prepare my Ashura. Go in and find the Acid Dragon. This would be a lot harder with a mech deck, but <laughs> who runs mech decks? And now Gromtal Valley flashbacks appear. Oh my god, they actually managed to kill him. That never happens. And I'm going the wrong way anyway, so... Doesn't matter. At some point I will learn the actual order that you attempt the Proving Grounds in, and which floor to go to first, and which room is locked, and all of that, but that involves counting, and I, I don't do counting. I'm a teacher of religious studies. If I if I could count, I'd know how underpaid I am. So I I I don't want to do that. That would just be sad. Right. So we'll try the other route. Noises of dragons in the background. They're they're fine. They're they're chilling. They're just vibing. Well, a new challenger approaches, the Amber Dragon, so you know I've got to kill him. Those of you who, uh, who are long-time fans of this series may remember having to fight him when you're under-leveled in Gromtal Valley, but easy revenge here. Unfortunately, Ashura got hit, so he's dead now, I guess. Right, and here we are, we're getting into the weird rooms. So, an Apsaras over there, a mermaid, and a vampire bush. So, always worth trying to take out the vampire bush first. And then, oh actually, it was a wraith. Fortunately, wraiths die very easily, because they are basically just a rug. If you get them in the model viewer, they are basically just a rug, so... Uh, I think you can do it in the shop interface, actually. But clearly nowhere near as powerful as 
as three pots in a in a cape. Now this is going to be the one time which of that actually uses witchy magic boom as opposed to witchy magic whiff. I should feel bad about killing them all. Uh, they are only little babies, but you know they are buffed by the Apsaras, so yeah, you can't you can't risk it. Also, they were standing vaguely in my way, so I had to kill them. Like I kill everything that stands vaguely in my way. So once again, I've gone the wrong way. I will eventually learn. world's most expensive door knocker the sphinx there we go so you can see this deck's actually very safe as long as you have a decent amount of magic stones as in 10 you're pretty much at full power albeit maybe just weakened slightly in the fact that you have to kill things faster if you can't send charges to Shora. but the dps is well worth it and, you know, paying a little bit of life doesn't really make that much difference in this game. As long as you're above, like, 150, you're not really slowed significantly. And that's the other reason we have the Dewata in this deck as well. Because uh, if you do somehow get incredibly injured, you can at least transform and keep your full movement speed. Exit up ahead. Yes, Witchlet and Mermaid. Nice. Right, so for this one, instantly start running. You do not want to try and fight Marids without any preparation. I am going to go back in because uh, I'm not a chicken, but... But I'm not risking uh, getting ice cubed the second I enter the floor. Especially in a deck which so heavily relies on a fire card, you want to be able to kill the highly damaging ones. We'll go and kill the ice golem. Uh, if he stops bouncing, he should be quite easy to kill. They'll leave through this one. Now I'm definitely going to get attacked in here, so wait for Lotus Dance. And start killing some skeletons. High defense means absolutely nothing if you are... If you can, one, ignore it, and two, you have elemental advantage against it. Uh, I think this one is Demon as opposed to Ice. I think Ice is smaller than this, so it's not the king of the skeleton family. But... Uh, still worth respecting. Skeletons have good AI, so uh, you don't want to get chased down with them because they, they will time their slashes for when you get back up. They also have a knockdown, which makes them pretty deadly. One downside of this deck is, of course, that if you accidentally discard your Ashura, you do have to cycle the deck through to get him back. So, uh, try not to do that. This has been Pro Tips with me. Kill the guy who vaguely vibrates at you. Another Pro Tip. So I kill so many people on these floors in such a short span of time. And I always get a two star rating. And just when I complain, I get three stars. It's like poetry. Uh, but nice Undyne, Water Elemental, and Ice Golem. Fun cards. So, first Psychic Floor. Um, this one's nice and easy. What do we even have here? We have a Mind Flayer, we have Yin Yang, who can and will heal me if I walk in when it's on the right colour. But, might as well kill this Mind Flayer. 
should just take a... Well, normally it takes less hits than that, but... But the things blocking the exits are where the true challenge lies. These things have so much health, I am sure that someone has accidentally misplaced a zero. Um, I can't remember what they're called. They're called like Puffy Wuffies or something. But as you can see, they only take one damage a time. Uh, and apparently they can actually detonate you after you're dead, after they're dead. So walk into the Yin Yang when he's on yellow mode, and he'll heal you. He literally has no other attacks, so... Uh, apparently my Ashura walked into him as he mode changed, uh, which is unfortunate, but hey, part of the game. So this might be one of the rare floors where I actually don't bother Zed charging. Uh, or at least Zed charging the Zed charging the Ashura. That's the Mad Bomber. He's uh, actually a very powerful for his stones cost card. Well, this is why we have Duartas. Alright, hello guys. Ignore me, I'm I'm not here. That it's called the Super Pumper, of course. How can you forget such an iconic card? And of course this is the one where you just start legging it. I'm actually quite lucky here, I've managed to get a decoy pillar, and I will be using it ASAP, because this is a room with necromancers, puppet masters, and a vampire, and all of these have quite powerful long-range abilities, but on top of that, can also charm your cards. So, decoy pillar, putting in work here. You've got to love it. Okay, apparently I don't go this way. So I go this way. I once managed to pass orienteering. Now, fun fact for those of you who don't know me in real life, all two of my subscribers who don't, uh, I'm profoundly colourblind, so I was not allowed to use the map when I did Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, they, It was deemed that I would get us entirely lost because it quickly became apparent that I can't tell the difference between a road on a map and a river. And I insisted that we had to walk down a river. So, so map reading, not my strong point, but I am remembering that I can try it. I'm losing a lot of weapon pairs here. This is... Uh, Slightly rough. We'll be fine. I always carry spares. There's no problems. And if everything goes even worse, and I've run out of all of that, that's why I've got my Mind Flayer Sea Monk combo, Memories of the Lost, to bring back 20 cards in the deck. So it's a full reset if things go abysmally badly. Which should make it all okay. What's this? Oh, it's just a wyvern. Two stars, and it's the neutral floor, so these should be rare. Uh, Puppet Master and Wyvern, nice. So, again, as soon as you can on this floor, leg it. This is the one with all of the demon lords. So try and find a safe place to uh, unstealth. You're probably not going to find one. But... But, hey, that's why we have the decoy pillar here. And I'd rather kill these guys just to prove that I can. Okay. 
Very good Valkyrie there. Very good Valkyrie. And I didn't even have to hide in a corridor for 30 minutes while my elves heal me. So that was a, that's a nice change. So, just continuing through. This is a compulsory fight floor, I'm pretty sure, so... We'll need to make sure that I have fighting gear on. So, Black Dragon, the boss of the Krasheen Mountains, and Ryuhei, who is the... I think technically supposed to be the god of of leaf as an element. As you can see, Rihei not doing a lot, but is doing a lot of damage multiple times. And actually succeeding once again in killing my dude. Uh, Rihei will be one of the cards in in an upcoming deck which should be themed around sacrificing my own units. There's two major cards that sacrifice units for extra power. It's Riohei and Pazuzu, uh, Pazuzu. And of course, um, they are both really fun cards. You play them alongside the Valkyrie, you play a bunch of Yowies, you know. But that's our next one, and I'm also convinced it's going to be an absolutely terrible deck. So we get into our first of the Proving Grounds themes, or the uh, Training Grounds at Wiss. Uh, ah, slight problem. A lucky hit from the... Uh, from the... I can't remember what it's called, the Kraken. Manages to take out a couple of my units. So, looks like... Oh, I am being sandwiched. This is bad. This is bad. We don't like this. Manage to salvage some mana here. This is not ideal. This is one of the compulsory fight floors, so I do have to be able to clear this. But nice bit of safe play here isn't going to go amiss. And of course, the Nwe is still pretty deadly. We'll need to try and do my best job at legging it. wait for the Lotus Dance and then hard combo significantly closer than I would have liked but hey I have tried to record this twice today so I'm not going to be too harsh on myself however this next floor uh, this next room should, in theory, be one that I can just run through, so let's actually use Memories of the Lost for a change. Bring all that stuff back. And a fully restored grip will make us happy. I honestly thought in that in this floor the challenge wasn't going to be the Nua and Kraken room. I thought it was going to be the Triple Demon Lord room, but okay. cancel and immediately hobble in. Not even close, baby. So 
so another tough room they just continuously get harder of course we should be able to just about outrun some of these skeletons I will go back to kill them because I am trying not to be a coward in this run but sometimes you just got to get the opportunity I think I think it was uh, me who first said that discretion is the better part of valor so if it worked for Falstaff, it will work for Tara Grimface, or whatever her official name is. And I will kill the big brine dragon. Uh, or I won't. Or I won't. I'll just leg it. I'm too late in the run, and I've done two of them today, so probably worth not, uh, not sacrificing it all out of pride. Ah, I'm actually... I actually thought that I was one floor earlier than this. Uh, it turns out this is floor 20, so of course I will have the challenging fight coming up. So I will try and hug the outskirts of this one, uh, because of course I will have to fight the four gods. And it's not worth trying to kill myself to do it. Now, of course, we do want to do a bit of pre-setting here, so firing the decoy pillar in just far enough. Incredibly large lifespan on that. And then trigger. So, once you've got your first of the four gods down, uh, this room becomes a lot safer, because you can then start focusing on the others. I think the Brian Dragon's the most deadly, at least in terms of this strat, because it's the only one that will be able to easily one-shot my... my Ashura. Here, I just... There we go. And should just be able to discard it in time. That's APM. Collect all of these magic stones, because of course I will need to be able to kill the White Tiger. And the White Tiger, really confused by this, absolute zoom is on this lad, can't actually work out how to attack because it wants to stay directly next to the decoy pillar, but at the same time can't run away from it to uh, be able to do its charge move. So, so just get stuck in a loop there. Of course... This one last room will contain more enemies. I'm just going to Dewata to be safe. I'm not a professional YouTuber, so I'm not throwing for the content. Shouts out to Pangea Panga. Not worth risking. Do not want to have to record this for a fifth time. Uh, no offense, YouTube. I do love you, but recording the same episode five times is... Uh, bad even for me. So. Of course the next room is the Emperor. I'm just going to carefully think about how to go about this. So after a quick fade cut I'll be back. Right and we are back. I have recalled just about how to do this. You need a Emperor. To capture the Emperor, you need eight Z charge Banshee hits and two capture cards. On top of that, I've of course got my Azura out, and I have preloaded the deck so that I don't have to cycle through. Uh, just rearranging the order of the deck. Now I actually have to do this pretty rapidly because my only um, my only Azura is uh, low on health. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. I managed to hit him with that capture card. Of course, he has Imperial Knots me. And he's captured! That is the Proving Grounds completed for the fifth time with this deck! Proving it's good! And time for my rewards. 
I get the White Tiger and the Golden Phoenix. Two gods for a godly run. So, as is tradition with this series, when I finish the Proving Grounds and I manage to capture one, the Emperor goes into my deck as a trophy to prove that it is a good enough deck to make it. So, I played quite sloppily, but even so, I was able to complete the Proving Grounds. So, join me in our irregularly scheduled programming next time with a deck I like to call the Hecatome. I've been Scissors Lizards, and thank you for watching.